my God, is there anybody else who always takes a picture of themselves <laughs> before they start the video when they're using their little devices? I do every time. Happy Friday, Stitchers. It is Friday, um, the 8th of January. Hope everybody's having a great year so far. I have, I have been stitching up a storm. I don't know what's happening. Well, yes, I do know what's happening. I have not done a lick of laundry in like five days. I just went downstairs and looked under the laundry chute and thought, I've got to start some laundry because it's looking pretty scary. And my house is a mess and um, that's just the way it is. And I'm okay with that, I guess. I have to just adjust you. I don't know. I'm all a cray. It's because of my chair. It's because of my chair. Just, just there. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I love adjusting. So, um, so here we are. Friday. I thought I'd do a quick update. Um, show you a few things that I have been working on this week. I'm pretty excited. I'm still not adjusted. This is so stupid. Okay, all right, here we go. I have to sit on the edge of my chair because otherwise they sink in. So, um, I am doing the Cross Stitch Crazy 2016 challenge, which is uh, 15 starts in the first 15 days. I have had more than that. I'm also part of a couple stitch alongs that I didn't count. So, I've had a lot of things going on. Um, so, I've got several starts. I've got a couple mini finishes, which are always fun. Mini finishes are great. So, let's get to those. First thing I have is the Magical Creatures calendar by Clouds Factory. Um, you've seen my border that I was working on. So, I started this. The stitch along officially started January 1st. I might have cheated a little bit and started on the 30th of December because you're not the boss of me. Um, I was just really itching to get started. So I did finish it. I started on the 30th and finished it on January 4th. And here it is. Let me see here. Um, I like it. I like it. It took longer than I had anticipated. Um... Like I said last time, I'm doing it on 28 count Monaco for Moe's Sale. This is, the border is in Moe's Sale Pretty Bird cotton. And then the inner border is in Moe's Sale 49ers. Um, I did all DMC except for I, where I substituted for Moe's Sale cottons in this block. So I did everything charted except for up here. This is mongoose, I believe, wholesale cotton. And then this purpley, pinky, bluey is Gladys, I believe, um, wholesale cotton. And then I did the flora down here in the same. And then um, what I didn't substitute up here, I just did in the charted cotton. So I'm pretty happy. The one thing that I did do See his eye. So I backstitched around his eye because the Frosted Pumpkin does that and I always like it, but on him it looks really oogly googly. And you know in those horror movies, like um, the ghost ones, like um, The Exorcist, but not the old Exorcist, the newer ones, where they're all, ah, and then their eyes go black, that's what it reminds me of, which really scares the crap out of me, let me tell you. I'm not a big horror movie person, but stuff with like ghosts and demons and possessions freak the sh freak the crap out of me. So I don't know if I'm going to keep that or not because he kind of creeps me out. So anyway, that is put away until February 1st or when I feel like um, I need to cheat. Put this right here. The second thing that I finished just last night was also my first official start in January and that is Brooks Books Advent Animals. Um, I plan on doing them all on one piece of fabric. Here Lucy is walking around. She just ate breakfast finally. It's almost 11. Um, so I finished Katie Kitty last night. I did um, adjust her border and did 
little single crosses instead of backstitch because I just didn't like the way the backstitch looked on this um, fabric. I am using 16 count Ada. Uh, it's Crystal Helix from Picture This Plus. So she's adorbs. Look at how adorbs she is. So I'm very happy. She did not take as long. I started her on the well, I started her on the first, finished her yesterday, which was the seventh, but I only worked on her three days. So the first day I finished like this much of her face without the back stitching. And then um, the second day, which was the sixth, I worked on her. I finished all of the cross stitching except for, I think, the number one. And then last night I finished the one and then did all of the detail work, all of the back stitching. She's cute. So she will go away with all of her little advent friends until February 1st or until I feel like working on her again, but at the latest, February 1st, where I start. And I haven't decided if I'm going to do Peter Polar Bear, which is number two, next, or if I'm gonna skip down, because I'm doing five across, or if I'm gonna pick number six, who might be the camel, I don't remember. I think that's, I think it was Lindy Stitches that's doing these. Is that Lindy? And she skipped down. She's like, everybody's already seen these, which is so true. So true, Stephanie. So true. Um, so my January 2nd start is my first full coverage. I did, over the summer, when Cross Stitch and Discuss was doing a Tilt and Craft stitch along, I did start a full coverage freebie from Tilt and Crafts, and I hated it. It was on 25 count um, even weave one over one and I did 104 stitches and I and I don't like it and I plan on never picking that back up again so I feel like this might officially be my first one that I finish but I don't know it's not finished yet so I am doing um, heaven and earth motherhood it's a quick stitch so it's only like 100 by 95 stitches which I thought was pretty good so I am um, doing it on 18 count white Ada, and I did my first 100 stitches. I did my first 101 stitches. So that's it. Uh, there are several colors there, and there's even some Krennic in there, which I you can't see it shine. And maybe you would if I would put something. I don't know. Um, so I worked on it. That took me like two hours took me two hours but I'm gonna finish it I don't know if I'll continue parking I'm I plan on going actually down the chart because there's some bigger blocks of colors down here and I thought if I could just get some get something done um, that'd be good so I'm parking to the right I don't know if that's right or not who knows mm. so that is that and I probably won't pick that up again until I start a rotation which will be after all of my starts possibly the beginning of February I think I might start a rotation hmm. my third start January 3rd uh, was save the stitches and I'm super excited to have started this I got farther along than what is shown because I was one thread off how does that happen, people? One thread off, and then I had to frog like half of my work. Um, I'm doing this on a 25 count white Lugana in all of the charted, um, I'm gonna make sure I do it the right way, and all the charted flosses, so just the regular black work. And here's what I have done. You can see <laughs> what I did have done. <sighs> sigh, big sigh. Um, this is also, I'm doing a, oh, why does it look like that's, oh, it was a thread, it looked dirty. Um, there's a stitch along in Stitch Mania, so this will be pulled out more than not. In fact, this will probably be the piece that I work on once I like I do my starts and I'm like eh, I don't want to work on this anymore I'll pull out save the stitches because I would like to actually get a block done this month 
I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I would like to. There is so much fabric on here. Holy moly cow. It's a lot of fabric. And I'm doing it in my Q-snap. Because I don't have a scroll frame big enough. I don't know how that's going to work. We're going to have to see. Day four is my peacock feather. Peacock feather uh, eyeglasses case. It is a just cross stitch pattern. And of course, I don't know. I don't know what year it is. I want to say like 2013, 2014. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I, and I'll put all these in the description box below. So, um, so you can see them. I did make a lot of progress on this. Now this is done on a 25 count, maybe 28. Heck if I know. 20. Well, this says 28 count lamb's wool, but it's linen, but it's not. It's an even weave, and I think it's 28 count. And here it is. I love the colors. Do you see? So there's some blended colors in here. Look at those. Those are so pretty. So pretty. Hanging thread, because I just was like, I'm done. Um, okay, so here's the thing with this piece of fabric. I just yesterday or the day before watch, watched uh, a video by Sherry Burkett and she was talking about an even weave, just a cheap even weave and I think she said it was M, is it MCG, MGC, I don't remember, textiles. And she said that it's not even and when you stitch you get like little rectangles instead of squares. And I'm like, oh my God, that's what this is doing. And she is the second person that I have watched a video that has said something about this even weave does rectangles instead of squares. And sure enough, can you see those stitches up there? Those are not squares, they're rectangles. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, I don't care. I don't care for this project, but that would really irritate me if I were doing something big and important, which this is not. So it's good for now. I don't, I'm sure that that's what I bought. It was just some stuff from Michael's or Joanne's. I will not purchase that again, just for that reason. That's kind of wacky. So that was day four. I'm really enjoying those colors. I have a thing for peacocks, I'm realizing. I never knew that. I've never really been a bird person, but these teals and greens, I just love them. Love them. Day five was a uh, random, day five was random threads by Erica Michaels. Oh, I couldn't show you what that, you just won't know what that peacock feather looks like. I didn't, it was from my digital subscription of Just Cross Stitch and I didn't print out the actual picture because I'm not gonna waste the ink. You'll just have to see it evolve. But this is random threads by Erica Michaels and it came with a piece of 40 count gauze and I was gonna do it I was gonna do it I pulled out the gauze I read the directions and just prepping it was just I was not interested in doing that I was not interested in the prep work of sewing it on fabric and then cutting out the back I was not in, I just wasn't interested so I decided to do it on 18 count Ada this is a piece of Regency from Picture This Plus, um, and it's the same ecru color as what you would stitch in the background of that 40 count. That was just going to be a lot of filler. So this is what I've gotten done um, a lot. I worked on this quite a bit. So I got a couple words, and this is um, yarn. And this down here is the top of the sewing machine. And this is like a spindle of um, wool, probably, since that says wool, that's what I'll say. And then these are gonna be some spools. I got a lot done. This is something that after I think my starts are done, I'm gonna take that two weeks before February and finish small projects, just so I have some finishes. 
I like this. It's quick and it's only two colors. It is only that dark brown. It's like 601, no, 610 and 434 DMC. That's what I'm using. So you miss some of the variegation that shows in the pattern in the um, sample stitch on the cover, but that's okay. I still like it. Um, day six, I started the Ink Circles Spirited Mandala. I don't like this as much as I thought I was going to. Here's what it looks like. I like it. And I bought linen to go with it. This is one of those mystery linens when I got my Picture This Plus order from their sale. I was like, what in the world? What did I do? And I did it. I'm going to have some extra, so I started this in a weird place. Um, and this is all that I got done. So this is on a 28 or a 32. I have the tag. 32. 32 count Belfast in Eek from Picture This Plus. This is, all, this is all that I did before I put it away. Which is this. Like part of that. I did this cross and then like a little bit of one side of that. Oops, that's the back. <laughs> ah! That was it. Oh, and my needle minder is from Gina's. I didn't tell you any of my needle minders. They're all from places that I purchased them from. How about that? Most of my needle minders are from Gina's or uh, the bulk of them are from Minding My Minders. I have not purchased any. I have not purchased any since the Black since Black Friday because I'm not purchasing things. And that's been going pretty well so far. It's only been eight days. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to pick this up because I don't like it because I don't like linen. I just realize over and over and over and over that I don't like linen, but I like the way it looks when it's done. First world problems. Hashtag stitchy problems. Um, and then yesterday's start was a kit that I have had for a bazillion years. Um, it is... It is in this bag and I'm gonna pull it out. So, designs for the needle. Uh, Santa peeking, Christmas traditions. I don't know if all that is necessary. What I did see is this. I got it at Walmart for apparently $3.97 and it's, the copyright is like 1999 or something. 98, 1998. I'm sure I didn't buy it then but I probably got it in 2000 or before. So that's what it's gonna look like. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be such a quick stitch. It's a pretty intense stitch. I mean, it's on 14 count Ada, which I had started way back when, and it came, the kit came with all the floss and the uh, Ada, and it came with this blended pearl stuff. It's like that plastic crap. And I was like, no, I'm not going to use that. So I pulled all that out and I'm substituting that for um, this number eight Krennic. It's pretty. It has that pearly look. 032 number eight. So I haven't gotten to stitch that yet, but I really wanted to. This is where I got. I just worked on this yesterday. Um, I started it yesterday afternoon. And then when I finished up Katie Kitty last night, I did that. So that was a lot. 14 count needle. I do not mind it. And that um, needle binder, that Santa that's all washed out, there you go, is from Heather Stitches to help fund her year of giving. And he, okay, did you notice this? Because I did not notice this till last night. Watch. See the Santa? See the Santa? Can you see them together? They're like so similar. Look at, they match. Even the holly in their, in their hats. Is that not perfect? I didn't even plan that. Can't plan that kind of thing. 
So that's fun. I like him. He'll be, he'll be, he's an easy stitch. There's just a lot of stitches on him. It's a lot of stitches. That's it. That's all I've done. How about a tag? That sounds like fun. Let's do a tag. I pulled one up. It's uh, Teresa Little Stitcher's tag. It's her year-end tag. So we're going to do that. As soon as I get comfortable. Oh my gosh. I'm so uncomfortable. My stitching chair is not uncomfortable. Oh, and check this out, guys. Look at this. This is my orchard jar. Girl's been busy. Girl's been busy. Busy, busy. Okay, let me take a drink of coffee. All right. Teresa Little Stitcher's tag. Let's do it. Number one, what is the most useful tip you've ever gotten from watching the floss tube community? Loop start. What else was there? Loop start. Number two, what is the best cross stitch related thing you have learned this year? Loop start. I haven't done anything else. Pretty lame. Number three, based on 2015, what have you learned that you will not do in 2016, if anything? I don't know. I guess nothing yet. Never say never. Try everything twice. My husband always says that. Try everything twice because the first time just might have been a, a freak bad experience. What are, number four, what are your favorite floss tube videos to watch? I enjoy updates most. Um, and then I like tutorials. And I do like haul. Um because I like to see what other people are getting it you know that I'm like oh I've never heard of that oh I've never seen that so I really enjoy that but updates are my most favorite um based on this year's cross stitching what now is your most used tool slash objects and what now are your least used tools or objects so my most used would be my q-snaps never heard of a q-snap before I started watching floss tube um, I was always a hoop girl. Ten years ago, they didn't have Q-snaps that I'm aware of, so, um, that definitely, that's what gets used. That's all I use. And I don't have any real stitchy tools, to be honest. I don't buy lots of that stuff. I'm trying to, I'm looking around to see if there's something that I don't use, but there really isn't. I got nothing. I got nothing. Random question, what did you do before needle minders? I know that's a rhetorical question. I'm not even gonna bother answering it, silly girl. Based on your experiences in 2015, do you now prefer small objects or small projects or big projects, full coverage or not? Um, since I haven't finished a full coverage, I'm not gonna say that that's my preference. And since I've only really finished one big project that I consider big, which was the Very Merry Christmas Town by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, I, I liked that. I just don't have enough experience to tell you. I like small things because they're easier to finish for me. I mean, I did some medium stuff. I did that house thing for my mother-in-law, and I did the hen thing for my neighbor, but those were more smallish. The hen was more small. The house was probably more medium. I don't know. I don't know what my preference is. We'll see at the end of this year where I'm cross-stitching for like a whole year. This would be a better end of 2016 tag. Maybe we should bring it back then. Number seven, do you stitch cards as well as other things? I have yet to stitch a card, but I really want to do one of those um, prick and stitch. Is that what they're called? Prick and stitch? Sounds dirty. <laughs> I want to try one of those. I have lots of embroidery floss that's not DMC that I would use for smalls, um, but I think they would be great for cards. So I, that's on my bucket list for 2016. What has been your biggest accomplishment this year? Stitching wise, probably finishing as much as I did. I had some finishes. That was pretty cool. Especially since I really didn't start stitching until like the middle of the year. That's what I'll say. My biggest crafting accomplishment would probably be using my long arm. 
because I've had it <laughs> for like four years. But this is the year that I have actually finished things on them. I have finished one, two, three, maybe five or six quilts, uh, two for commission. That's a big deal. And um, one I haven't bound yet. And one I actually made an entire quilt for somebody for on commission um, and quilted it as well. So those, those as far as crafting things, that's my big deal. Um, if there are any of you that watch and long arm, you know what those machines cost. And for it to be sitting in my basement for almost four years was a travesty. So um, 2016, I'm hoping, is a bigger year. My The big thing that I want to do is I have a quilt that I made for our bed. I don't know if I've mentioned this, and it's probably a king size. In my table, I have my quilting table for my long arm set up to do king size, so it's as big as it goes. I hope this quilt isn't too big for it. I want to quilt that and get it on my bed. Like This is the year that it needs to happen because it's been pieced for probably five years, and I've just never done it. So anyway, there you go. Um, what has been the most disappointing stitching thing of 2015? I haven't really been that disappointed. I got nothing. Again, 2016 maybe. Uh, the funniest moment in stitching this year. <laughs> I don't know how fun. It's funny to me. So as you evolve as a stitcher, there are things that you do in the beginning that you would never do now. For example, um, in the beginning when I first started, I would not spend a lot of time frogging. If I missed a stitch, I would just fill it in with something else. If I miscounted, I would just fudge it. In that piece um, that I gave to my mother-in-law, I must have stitched at night in poor lighting and it was a two over two. That was a two over two. And it might have been the first real project that I did on. It was on, it was on even weave. It wasn't even that big of a deal. But I missed, it's like I did all of my legs one way. And then I missed one somewhere. And I think it was probably the night that I stayed up until like two in the morning stitching. And I didn't have very good lighting. And I like missed it. And then one, it looked like I went over two legs and I left it. I just left it. And I'm like, ah, F it. She's not going to see it. Like, she's not going to. So when I was finishing it off um, in December to give her, it was so difficult not to just be like, I just really want to pull those stitches out and redo it. But I wasn't going to because that was silly. Um, I would never do that. I would never do that. So I was laughing. I thought it was hilarious. I was laughing while I was doing it because it looked so god awful. She didn't know. She didn't know. Uh, number 11. What was your worst moment in stitching this year? I didn't have a worst. I didn't have a bad moment in stitching. No crying, no yelling, sewing maybe, stitching not. I'm good. Number 12, if you were put on a deserted island, what five stitchy things would be your must-have items? Charts, I'm lumping stuff together. Charts, floss, needles, probably scissors. And YouTube, floss tube. Because obviously this deserted island has, oh, I have to say like floss tube with a computer. I don't even need that. I mean, I would be bored. I'd be bored without my internet. I'll say a frame, like a Q-snap. Yeah. Charts, floss, fabric. Did I say that? Charts, floss, fabric needles and a frame. Sure. That's what we're going to go with. Number 13, which four floss tubers would you like to have on your island with you and why? That's so hard. That's so hard. There's so many people that I love. 
Um, okay, so who do I just love watching? Um, okay, so I think even, jeez, oh I just don't know. I just don't know. Like, I think I take Tracy P because she and I have very similar humor. <laughs> nobody else gets that shit. <laughs> so nobody else gets that, gets that humor sometimes. Sometimes they do. Um, but I, she would have to come. She would have to come. Um, probably, so that's one. I have four. Probably Carolyn because she knows so much. So we'd always be learning. Otherwise our brains would just go to mush. And the third person I think would probably be Teresa because she made this tag and she should get to come. And I like to just listen to her speak. <laughs> That's kind of lame. And the fourth person, this is... <laughs> Here's my funniest moment in stitching. It's not even stitching related. So I just recently in the past few weeks found Bearded Stitcher. I would take him. Hear me out. Ooh, look at me showing some... Jeez. Hear me out. Okay, so we know that... All of us know that male stitchers are a rarity they just they are male stitchers are a rarity and they are a rarity on floss tubes so the only ones that i watch are garrett brian c tim walker uh lucas from brochet and now bearded stitcher so <laughs> so the thing that they all have in common, obviously, are their boys. The thing that they don't all have in common is the beard. Hear me out. My husband has a beard. I like beards. And the rest of you don't have beards, so grow some beards. So I would take Bearded Stitcher for eye candy. I'm sorry. It happens to women all the time. Boys can be eye candy, too. I know I have nothing that he wants, but he's pretty. <laughs> He's so pretty. I just want to watch him. And you know what? If he does this tag, he can bring his husband, who's not a floss tuber. But I'm not the boss of you. you. Bring whoever you want. There you go. Bearded Stitcher. I would take him. He's fun. He's fun. So that's, uh, <laughs> I just feel so silly. I <laughs> like the beard and the stitching. What else is there? What else do you need? Bearded boy and stitching. Love it. So that's it. That's my update. Um, I'll probably come back in, you know, a little over a week when I have the rest of my starts started. So there'll be something to show. And maybe I'll have an update on Save the Stitches. I really want to work on that. I really want to work on that. So that's all, guys. Um, hope you're having a great week. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay stitchy. I'm going to learn how to put that in here somehow. And we'll see you next time. Bye.